Let's be honest for a second. How many times did you wake up last night? Once? Twice? And what did you tell yourself when you looked at the clock at 3 a.m.? You probably told yourself, it's fine, I'm over 60, this is just part of the deal. You think because your friends do it, because your doctor shrugs it off, that it's normal. I am here to tell you that is a lie. Waking up to urinate at night, whether it's three times or just one single time, is not normal aging. It is a biological error. It is a sign that your body's filtration system is malfunctioning. You might not feel exhausted yet. You might think you function just fine on broken sleep. But here is the reality check. Every time you wake up, even for two minutes, you snap your brain out of its cleaning cycle. You are robbing yourself of the testosterone production and heart recovery that only happens in deep sleep. We need to start by clearing the minefield. You are currently doing things that you think are relaxing or even healthy that are actually weaponizing your kidneys against you. Let's look at your evening routine. You worked hard all your life. You deserve to relax, right? So you spend your evening in your favorite chair. Maybe you watch the news, maybe a movie, maybe you read. You are sitting there for two, maybe three hours before bed. You feel relaxed. Your heart rate is down. But look at your ankles. Look at your calves. While you are sitting there enjoying your peace, a silent physics experiment is happening in your body. It's called dependent edema. Here is the mechanics of the male body that no one explains to you. During the day, as you walk, stand, or sit, gravity is your enemy. It pulls fluids down. Your blood, your lymph, the water you drank at lunch, it all drifts downward. By 7 p.m., a significant amount of fluid has pooled in your lower legs. You might not see it, your ankles might not look swollen like a balloon, but the fluid is there. It is trapped in the tissue. Now here is the sabotage. You go to bed, you lay down flat. Suddenly, gravity is no longer pulling that fluid down to your feet. The playing field is level. And slowly, over the first hour of sleep, all that fluid that was stuck in your legs begins to drain back into your bloodstream. It rushes back to your heart. Your heart is a smart organ. It senses this sudden massive increase in fluid volume. It thinks, whoa, too much blood volume, high pressure alert. It panics. To protect you, your heart releases a hormone called ANP, atrial natriuretic peptide. Do you know what ANP does? It screams at your kidneys, dump the water, filter it out now. So your kidneys go into overdrive. They take all that fluid reabsorbed from your legs and turn it into urine, fast. You wake up at 1 a.m. with a full bladder. You think it's because you drank a glass of water at dinner. Wrong. You are waking up because you are effectively drinking a bottle of water through your legs while you sleep. The habit of sitting motionless with your legs down all evening is loading a water gun that is pointed directly at your sleep cycle. You are creating a reservoir of fluid that your body has to dump the moment you lie down. Number four, the hidden salt bank. This is where you get defensive. I don't eat much salt, you say. I don't even use the salt shaker at the table. I believe you. But the salt shaker is innocent. The real criminal is hiding in the healthy food you eat hours before bed. Here is the concept you need to understand. The sodium lag. When you eat sodium, your body holds onto water to dilute it. It's a survival mechanism. If your blood gets too salty, you die. So, your body refuses to let you pee. It hoards water. Let's say you have a sandwich for dinner. Bread? Loaded with hidden sodium. Deli meat? It's practically salt cured. Cheese? Pure sodium. Or maybe you had some canned soup because it's light. Canned soup is a salt bomb. You eat this at 7 p.m. Your body detects the salt and locks down your bladder. You feel fine all evening. You don't need to go. This gives you a false sense of security. You think, great, my bladder is empty. But then you go to sleep. Around 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., your kidneys finally catch up. They have processed the sodium. The danger is past. Now the body says, okay, we don't need all this extra water anymore to dilute the salt. Get rid of it. The floodgates open. This is the sodium lag. You are paying the bill for your dinner six hours later. You are eating a time bomb. And it's not just the obvious junk food. It's the salad dressing. It's the marinade on your chicken. It's the cottage cheese. If you are loading your system with sodium in the evening, you are chemically programming your kidneys to perform a high volume flush in the middle of your rest cycle. You cannot cheat chemistry. If you load the system with salt, the system must dump water, and it will choose the most inconvenient time to do it. Number three, the mouth breather syndrome, the oxygen drop. 
This is the one you will deny. I don't snore, you say. I sleep fine. Do you? Do you wake up with a dry mouth? Is there a glass of water on your nightstand right now? If the answer is yes, you are a mouth breather. And mouth breathing is a direct trigger for nocturia. This is not a theory. This is biological fact. When you breathe through your mouth at night, a few terrible things happen. First, your tongue falls back. Your airway collapses slightly. You might not fully choke. You might not have full-blown sleep apnea, but you are struggling for air. This is called flow limitation. This lowers the oxygen levels in your blood. When your oxygen drops, your brain sends a distress signal. Your heart rate spikes. Your body enters a state of fight or flight stress, all while you are unconscious. Now connect this to the bladder. When your heart is stressed by a lack of oxygen, it creates a false signal of fluid overload. It triggers that same diuretic hormone we talked about earlier. Your body thinks it is dying. It thinks, I need to dump weight to survive, dump fluids. Snoring isn't just noise. Snoring is a chemical command to your kidneys to produce urine. You aren't waking up because your bladder is small. You are waking up because your poor breathing is chemically forcing your kidneys to work overtime. You are effectively dosing yourself with diuretic medication every time your jaw falls open at night. If you ignore your breathing, no amount of saw palmetto or prostate pills will ever save you. You are fixing the plumbing while the house is on fire. Number two, the nightcap trap, the quick truth. We're going to be very fast with this one because you already know it. Some of you drink alcohol in the evening to help you sleep. It's a myth. Alcohol doesn't make you sleep, it sedates you. But more importantly, alcohol chemically shuts off a hormone called vasopressin. Vasopressin is the anti-pee hormone. It's the only thing keeping your kidneys quiet at night. You drink alcohol, you turn vasopressin off. The floodgates open. That's it. That's the science. If you want to stop waking up, the evening drink has to go. No negotiation. Let's move on to the real killer. Number one, the just-in-case pee, psychological sabotage. This is the habit that shocks men the most. This is the one you do because you think you are being smart. This is the one you were probably taught to do as a child. You brush your teeth. You put on your pajamas. You pee. Then you read a book for 15 minutes. Then, right before you reach over to turn off the light, you go to the toilet again, just in case. You squeeze out a few drops. You strain a little. You want to be empty. You are training your bladder to fail. Listen to me. Your bladder is a muscle. It is designed to stretch. It has sensors in the wall called stretch receptors. These sensors send a signal to your brain saying, I'm full, time to go. By constantly forcing yourself to void when your bladder is not full, strictly out of anxiety or habit, you are recalibrating those sensors. You are sending a neurological signal to your brain that says, this feeling, this 10% fullness, this is the new 100%. You are shrinking your functional bladder capacity. Over years of just-in-case peeing, you create a condition called sensory urgency. Your brain starts to panic when the bladder holds only two or three ounces of liquid. You are creating a hypersensitive alarm system. You think you are emptying the tank to get a longer sleep. In reality, you are shrinking the tank so it has to be emptied more often. You are neurologically programming yourself to wake up for a thimble full of urine. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy of the worst kind. You are treating your bladder like a delicate flower, and so it has become weak. Now, take a breath. I can feel your resistance. I can practically hear you arguing with the screen. But I have to pee just in case. But I love my evening news in my chair. But my wife cooks with salt. What am I supposed to do, starve? Excuses, all of them. You have reached the halfway point of this video. Most people have already clicked away. The weak ones left when I told them to stop drinking alcohol. They want a magic pill. They want a doctor to tell them, it's not your fault, here is a prescription. They don't want to change. They want to be comforted, but you are still here. That tells me something about you. It tells me you are tired of the lies. It tells me you are actually ready to do something about it. So here is the deal. You have two choices right now. Choice A, you turn this off. You go back to your recliner. You eat your salty ham sandwich. You pour a drink. You convince yourself that waking up four times a night is just part of aging. You accept the decline. You accept the brain fog. You accept the slow, miserable march towards diapers and frailty. Choice B. You stop whining and you start fighting. 
you realize that your body is a machine and right now you are operating it wrong. You decide that you want your nights back. If you choose B, then pay close attention because the next five habits are the antidote. These are not tips. These are tactical maneuvers. We are going to reverse the engineering of your body to stop the urine production before it starts. We are going to reverse the damage. We are going to use specific physical actions to counter the biological errors. Number five, the leg drain maneuver. Remember the fluid trapped in your legs? The gravity trap? We are going to fix that manually before you sleep. You need to mobilize that fluid while you are still awake so you can pee it out before bed, not during sleep. We are going to force that ANP reaction to happen on our schedule. Here is the protocol. The 45 degree drain. One hour before bed, while you are reading or watching your final show, you must get your legs up. And I don't mean on a footstool. That's not enough. Gravity needs help. You need your feet above the level of your heart. Lie on the floor with your legs up the wall or lie on the couch with your legs stacked on three or four pillows. Do this for 20 to 30 minutes. What happens? Physics. That liter of fluid in your calves rushes down to your kidneys. Your bladder will fill up rapidly within about 30 minutes. Good. That is exactly what we want. We want that flood to happen at 9.30 p.m. You will have a massive urge to pee before you even brush your teeth. You will void that entire liter of fluid. That is a liter of fluid that would have woken you up at 2 a.m. Now it's in the toilet before your head hits the pillow. To make this even more effective, use compression socks during the late afternoon. Put them on at 5 p.m. Take them off at 8 p.m. This prevents the pooling in the first place. You are manually pumping the water out of your system before the lights go out. It is simple hydraulics. Use it. Number four, the double void technique. We are going to replace the just-in-case pee with something scientific. This is called double voiding, and it is the gold standard for men with BPH, enlarged prostate. Here is the reality. When you have an enlarged prostate, it presses on the urethra. When you pee, you often don't empty completely. The flow stops, but there is still urine left in the bladder. That residual volume is why you wake up an hour later. You cannot force it out by straining. Straining actually tightens the muscles and closes the valve. Here is the new habit. The first pass, go to the bathroom, pee normally, don't strain, just go until the stream stops. The reset, leave the bathroom. This is critical. Walk away, go brush your teeth, put on your pajamas, wash your face, take about 10 minutes, distract yourself. The second pass, go back to the toilet and try again. Why does this work? That 10 minute break allows the bladder muscle, the detrusor, to relax and reset. It allows the prostate to settle. When you go the second time, gravity and relaxation often allow that final two to four ounces of trapped urine to escape. You are wringing out the sponge completely. Those extra ounces are the difference between waking up at 3 a.m. and sleeping until 6 a.m. You are starting the night with a truly empty tank. Number three, nasal breathing training. We need to stop the heart from panicking. We need to stop that ANP diuretic hormone. We need to keep your oxygen high. You must breathe through your nose at night. The nose is not just a hole in your face. It is a filter, a humidifier, and a regulator of air pressure. It produces nitric oxide, a gas that dilates your blood vessels and lowers your blood pressure. When you breathe through your nose, you enter deep restorative REM sleep. Your heart rate stays low. Your kidneys stay in sleep mode. So how do you ensure this when you are asleep? This is going to sound crazy to some of you. It might sound scary, but it is used by elite athletes, top medical experts, and military operators. Mouth taping. I'm not talking about duct tape. I'm not talking about sealing your mouth shut like a hostage. I'm talking about a tiny strip of medical micropore tape placed vertically across the center of your lips. It serves one purpose. It provides a gentle sensory signal. When your jaw tries to fall open at 2 a.m. to snore, the tape pulls slightly on the skin. Your brain feels this pull and unconsciously closes the jaw. You switch back to nasal breathing without waking up. If the tape is too extreme for you right now, I understand. Start with nasal strips to open the passages. But your goal is to keep that mouth closed. When you sleep with your mouth closed, you stop the chemical signal to pee. It is the cheapest medical intervention you will ever use, and it is more effective than most pills. Number two, the temperature drop. 
Your body cannot enter deep sleep if it is too hot. And for men, heat is a sleep killer. But more importantly, heat causes you to sweat, which causes dehydration, which concentrates your urine. Remember, concentrated urine is toxic urine. When your urine becomes dark and acidic because you are hot and dehydrated, it burns the lining of the bladder. An irritated bladder spasms. It screams, empty me, even if there are only a few drops inside. You need a cool room. 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 to 20 Celsius. But here is the real habit, the biohack, the warm shower leading to the cold room. Take a warm shower or bath 90 minutes before bed. This brings blood to the surface of your skin. When you step out of that warm bathroom into the cool air of your bedroom, your core body temperature plummets. This sudden drop in temperature is a biological trigger. It signals the release of melatonin. It tells the brain, the sun has gone down, the temperature has dropped, it is time to hibernate. It knocks you out faster than a pill. And by keeping the room cool, you keep your urine dilute and your bladder calm. You are creating an environment of hibernation, not stress. Number one, the strict hydration curfew. This is the hardest one. This requires willpower. This is where most men fail because they lack discipline. You need a strict cutoff time for fluids, not a suggestion, a rule. The two hour rule. If you go to sleep at 11 p.m., your last sip of fluid, water, tea, milk, anything, is at 9 p.m. That means no glass of water on the nightstand. Why do you have it there? Are you planning to run a marathon in your sleep? Get rid of it. That means no herbal tea while watching the news. That means no sips to wash down supplements. Take them earlier with dinner. Why two hours? Because that is exactly how long it takes for a liquid to enter your mouth, be absorbed by the gut, enter the blood, be filtered by the kidneys, and land in the bladder. If you drink at 10 p.m., that water hits your bladder at 1 a.m. Boom, you're awake. If you stop at 8 p.m., that water hits your bladder at 10 p.m. You pee it out right before bed, using the double void technique, and your tank is empty for the night. But I get thirsty, you say. Thirst is often just a habit, or it's because you ate that salty dinner we talked about. If you fix the salt, you fix the thirst. If your mouth is dry, swish some water and spit it out, but do not swallow. You have to decide what you love more, that cup of tea or your sleep. You cannot have both. You must choose. So there it is, the mechanics of your misery and the blueprint for your freedom. I told you this wasn't going to be comfortable. I told you I wasn't going to baby you. Look at your hands. In your left hand, you have your old life, the recliner, the salty dinner, the open mouth snoring, the denial. That hand holds a future of broken sleep, declining health, and the sheer exhaustion of a man who never truly rests. A man who accepts that waking up three times a night is just who he is now. In your right hand, you have the new protocol, the leg elevation, the hydration curfew, the nasal breathing, the discipline. It isn't easy. It takes work. It requires you to change habits you've had for 40 years. It requires you to be weird, to tape your mouth, to lie on the floor with your legs up. But ask yourself, what is a full night of sleep worth to you? What is it worth to wake up with energy? to have a clear mind, to feel like a man again instead of a patient, to have your testosterone back, to have your focus back. The science is clear, the biology doesn't lie, the choice is yours. Don't just watch this video and nod. Do not just click like and move on to a cat video. Do the work, tonight. Start with the legs up, start with the water curfew. Prove to yourself that you are still in control of your own body. Prove to yourself that you are not just getting old, you are just doing it wrong. If you know a man, a father, a brother, a friend, who is suffering through the zombie life, share this video with him. Don't let him suffer in silence. He thinks it's normal too. Be the one to wake him up so he can finally sleep. And subscribe to this channel, because I'm not done. There are a hundred other lies about men's health that we need to dismantle, one by one. I'm going to tell you the truth that the mainstream ignores. Get your legs up, put the water down, get some sleep. I'll see you in the next one.